Of the antiarrhythmic drugs, we have the class 1, which is subdivided into 1A, 1B, and 1C. The medications of the class 1A are the quinidine, the procanamide, and the disopyramid. This class blocks the sodium channel very quickly, but it also leaves the sodium channel very quickly. So they have the action of rapidly closing and opening the sodium channels. And this results in the increase of the refractory period, which is the period after which the cardiac muscles can be excited again. So low refractory period means that you can excite the cardiac muscles multiple times very quickly. And wide refractory period means that the cardiac muscles cannot be excited in successive sessions. These medications also increase the duration of action potential. They are mainly used to affect arrhythmias that are caused by accessory pathways. The normal cardiac rhythm starts by electrical current from the SA node that goes downward, and it has a predetermined specific pathway. In certain cases, such as myocardial infarction affecting this pathway, the current is forced to take an alternative pathway. And as the current takes alternative pathways, it excites the muscles in an arrhythmic pattern. This accessory pathway is seen in the Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, but it can also be seen in anything that damages the heart. The class 1A are excellent in treating this cause. Quinidipine is derived from the plant Cinchona, and excessive consumption can cause synchronism. And this manifests in a patient having ear ringing or tinnitus and headaches. This is a very specific side effect for this only one medication, so expect to see it in exams. Procanamide can cause drug induced lupus, just like hydralazine, which is evidenced by antihistone antibodies, and in rare cases, duzepiridine can cause heart failure. These medications can also increase the QT interval, and this puts the patient at a risk of developing torset du Bois syndrome. If untreated, this also results in heart failure. If we look at the action potential of the cardiac muscle, we can see that the class 1A affects the phase 0. This is another very specific physiological effect that you will see in the exams but not in the clinical practice. Use the link below to get access to the full cardiology medications course. The course includes all heart medications, their mechanism of action, the side effects, and the important notes. With every lecture in the course, you will have the external links referencing the updated guidelines so that you stay up to date and you don't miss anything. You can also test your knowledge by answering the MCQs and the quizzes included in the course. It's an excellent way to stay updated and to remember everything. Thank you for watching.